Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to John. We're reading from the 12th chapter, and we'll be reading verses 12 through 16. It can be found on page 873 of your pew Bible, or if you have your own Bible to follow along with. Um, And also feel free if you have a Bible app on your phone to follow along there. But let us attend together to God's word for us. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, use the words that I speak this day and use the the ears that hear that your word might be spoken and heard. Send your spirit upon us to filter out anything that is not from you so that we may be enriched for your service and the glory of your name. In Christ we pray, amen. So as is probably apparent, uh, today is Palm Sunday. It is the beginning of Holy Week. It is the beginning of this this rich time, uh, both in in our faith and in the life of the church, and frankly, in the history of the world. Today we read this story that is very familiar to us. We read about Jesus coming into Jerusalem and the crowds waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Save us now. Hosanna. And laying their their clothes on the road and Jesus riding a donkey and all those things that, that we're so familiar with. It is the beginning of an eventful week. And as they talked about in the children's message, of course, it doesn't... Uh, end on this high. Jesus comes in and he's being acclaimed and people are are really excited. We read in chapter 12 that the crowd had had come from the festival because they've heard that Jesus is on his way. And they know that Jesus has been doing some amazing things. In fact, right before this passage, we read about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha. And people have heard this, and they're excited to see him. They're excited to know what's going on. They proclaim him. They shout Hosanna. But then, as the week goes on, Jesus is betrayed by one of his closest friends. And then he undergoes this this sham trial. And then he is sent to be executed, killed on a cross, dying the death of a criminal in shame, and buried in a tomb. And you have to wonder what those disciples around him were thinking. It starts out with so much excitement and so many wonderful things happening, and finally, We've reached this climax. For for weeks now, they've been traveling with him towards Jerusalem. The Gospels tell us that that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem, and they've been traveling that way. They've been walking with him, and, and now they've entered, and it's exciting, and everything is happening. And then it's falling apart. And they had to wonder what what happened. It makes no sense. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. 
what was the point? We experience that in our own lives often, don't we? There are times in life where everything is just going great. It's all, it's all perfect. Yeah. Everything is falling into place, and, and if we're you know, of a spiritual bent, we'll say, we're, we're so blessed. And if we're of a less spiritual bent, we'll say, we're so lucky. Right? And if we, we feel pretty good about ourselves, we may just pat ourselves on the back and say, I'm doing a great job. And then suddenly things aren't going so well. Things fall apart. A relationship breaks up. Our health leaves us. A loved one is diagnosed with a, a dreadful disease. How do we make sense of it? What's the point? There's only really two ways to think about it. The disciples were in that same boat that we are, wondering what's the point. And, and this little verse at the end of the passage says something somewhat surprising. It says that at first the disciples didn't understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him, that these things had been done to him. You see, for the disciples, they, they looked at what had happened and they recognized the hand of God behind it all. They remembered as Jesus came in that the people were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they said, oh, we've read that before. That's in the psalm, written hundreds of years ago. But it's happening now. They see Jesus betrayed, and they say, that, that's in here too. They saw Jesus on the cross, and they said, this is Psalm 22. They remembered that these things had been written about him. And maybe they didn't understand why, but they understood that it was on purpose. That these things weren't just random acts. These weren't things that just happened. But that they happened on purpose. That they have meaning. Next Sunday, on Easter Sunday, if uh, you're watching TV, you may turn on NBC and see a musical being performed. NBC has been doing that over the last while. They, they have live musicals that they're televising, and, and with it being Easter, they're doing Jesus Christ Superstar. It's that rock opera that, that was written by uh, Tim Rice with the lyrics and... <laughs> and now I'm blanking his name. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber is doing the music, right? Um, and it, it was one of the first rock operas. It was a huge hit. Right? And I don't know about you, but I love the music from that show. Okay? Um, I think it's got great music. I think the, the uh, characterization of some of the people is just, just powerful and moving. Yeah. But the thing about that show is it presents Jesus as a tragic hero. It presents Jesus as, as, you know, just made some bad decisions along the way. And if he'd done things differently, maybe things would have turned out better. But, you know, things just happened, and they got out of hand, and, and he ended up getting himself killed. And it's just kind of sad and tragic but there's not a real point to it. And you end up being like, like the apostles sitting around saying, what's the buzz? What's happening? Right? What was really the point? 
You see, we can look at the world that way as just things that happen randomly by chance. And in fact, that's kind of the prevailing worldview we're taught. As, as somebody who, you know, part of my career had been a scientist and now as a, as a pastor, I'm asked all the time, well, do you believe in evolution? And I always have to say, well, what do you mean by evolution? Because the way evolution is taught as a f- worldview right, is that we're here just based on billions of years of random events that just happened by chance to result in us. There's no meaning. There's no purpose. It just happens. And so when you experience those things that go wrong in life, you throw up your hands and you say, what's the buzz? (laughs) What's happening? I don't get it. And even the things that happen that are good, you don't have meaning behind them. But if instead we look at our lives and, and like the apostles recognize that there's someone behind all this, we may not understand it at the time, but we can look back and say, you know, this has been, this has been written about. This is purposeful. This is God's intention. We realize that everything that happens in our life has meaning and purpose because it's part of a greater narrative. That it's been written that God is the author of what happened throughout history, what happened with Jesus, and God is the author of what happens with us. It's not meaningless, it's not purposeless. It matters, even when we don't understand what's going on. We can trust what is happening because we know the author. And not only do we know what happened with Jesus, not only do we have the experience of our own lives and those we know, but we know the end of the story. And it is good. We know that eventually there will be a new heaven and a new earth. We know that eventually God is going to complete this work of reconciliation and he will wipe every tear from our eyes and we will live in his presence. We trust that because we trust the author. Anton Chekhov was a a Russian playwright. And Chekhov is famous for for saying one time, you don't put a gun on the mantle in scene one if you're not going to fire it before the end of the show. God didn't put things in here just because. He put them in here because they're going to happen. They're like Chekhov's gun. And maybe it hasn't happened yet, but we can trust that the end of the story is good. So whatever you're going through in your life right now, whether you're on some wonderful high and everything is falling into place, or you're in a deep valley and everything is falling apart, we can trust with the disciples that we may not understand it now, but in the end, it will make sense because it's part of God's plan and it will be good. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy is the weak, holy, consecrated, belonging to God. We move from hosannas to horror with the predictable ease of those who know not what they do. Our hosannas sung, 
our palms waved. Let us go with passion into this week. It is a time to curse fig trees that do not yield fruit. It is a time to cleanse our temples of any blasphemy. It is a time to greet Jesus as the Lord's anointed one and pour perfume out for him without counting the cost. It is a time for preparation. The time to give thanks and break bread is upon us. The time to give thanks and drink of the cup is imminent. Eat, drink, remember. On this night of nights, each one must ask as we dip our bread in the wine, is it I? And on that darkest of days, each of us must stand beneath the tree and watch the dying. If we are to be there when the stone is rolled away, the only road to Easter morning is through the unrelenting shadows of that Friday. Only then will the alleluias be sung. Only then will the dancing begin.